Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. The Lord be with you. Good morning. If we haven't met, I, although I think we have, my name is Nanette Fallback. I'm a member at Liberty Church, and I'm really glad that you've chosen to worship with us this morning. As we begin our worship service, I want to read a quote that I love from C.S. Lewis regarding worship. It is in the process of being worshipped that God communicates his presence to men. I'm going to read it one more time. It is in the process of being worshipped that God communicates his presence to men. So as we begin, would you keep that in mind? Please stand and let us pray our call to worship found on page one of your worship folders. I'll lead if you will respond. Jesus said, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. Let me pray for our time together this morning. Father, thank you for another Sunday where we gather together to worship you in word and song. Lord, as we come to this place, may you renew our hearts and give us hope and purpose for tomorrow. Lord, keep us alert to your leading and your guidance as we worship you. In the strong and perfect name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Please remain standing and sing the song on page two. Raise up the crown, rise on the praises, rest on the crown.
You may be seated. Hear this call to confession from John chapter 3, verse 19. The light has come into the world, and people love darkness rather than the light because their deeds were evil. Let us confess our sin to God. The beginning of confession happens when God shines his light in the dark places in our lives, the places that feel shadowy. He comes with a light that is not judgmental, but loving, a light that is not punitive, but caring, and a light that expresses unconditional love that brings healing, restoration, and compassion to all the dark places in all of our lives. This is the kind and patient and loving God that we serve. Let us now pray aloud the prayer of confession found on page three. God of glory, you sent Jesus among us as the light of the world to reveal your love for all people. We confess that our sin and pride hide the brightness of your light. We turn away from the poor. We ignore cries. We do not strive for peace. In your mercy, cleanse us of our sin. Renew us by your spirit that we may show forth your glory shining in the face of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's take a couple of minutes to confidently and silently go before the Lord in confession. Stand and hear these words of pardon from John chapter 3, verse 17. God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. In the name of Christ, you are forgiven. Please remain standing as we sing the song on page 4. shadow of the glorious cross, compelled by grace to cast my lot. I'll discard the loss and bear your name, forsaking all for your own fame. Your hymn of grace on over.
the peace of Christ. This is the time in our service where we encourage you to greet those close to you, not so close to you. And parents, you can also take your children to children's ministry. Please greet one another with the peace of Christ. Good morning, Liberty Church Mainline. It's good to see you this morning. I am Matt, the pastor here at Liberty, and want to extend a welcome if I have a chance to. If you're visiting, want to say hello. We will have refreshments afterwards. I hope that you're able to stay and partic uh, participate in those. Uh, there are a number of announcements that are in the back inside cover of your worship folder, some events and activities, especially uh, social gatherings. Uh, we've been invited to join picnics with St. Mary's, our host church. Uh, during the summer. We also have uh, events that we're going to be having. Um, the next one is July 8th. You can see that there's going to be a Liberty Kids Ministry Outreach, uh, and we need shoe boxes for that, so there's a lot going on. I uh, do encourage you to take a moment to look over those at some time later today or this week. But my uh, great privilege this morning is to introduce our preacher. Uh, Michael Chen is going to be uh, delivering God's word to us. Um, Mike was a classmate of mine in college. We were in uh, the same Bible study. Some of you know um, Jim Anger from Liberty uh, Collingswood. We were all three of us in the same Bible study together. Uh, and uh, I've had the honor of uh, worshiping together with Mike when he was doing his seminary studies. We were at the same church in New Jersey as well. Uh, Mike has been doing uh, campus ministry in the Philadelphia area for the past 13 years, first with CCO and then the last three years with uh, Impact Ministry, which serves students of color on campuses, uh, and is currently working on his PhD in family marriage and family integrative therapy. Uh, he guest preached for us in the fall, did a fantastic job. I wasn't here, but I got through the wonders of technology. I was able to enjoy the word you delivered, and I'm excited for you, Mike, to bring God's word for us today. Thank you, Mad. It's good to be here. Always good to be with God's people. Uh, and yes, that 90s Bible study. It's wonderful. <laughs> uh, along with um, really um, spirited participation in a um, really awkward basketball pickup league as well. Um, just provided the context for <laughs> wonderful memories. Uh, and really the context to talk about Jesus together in a really profound way that really shaped my life. Um, not really growing up in the church, finding people um, in the context of, of campus ministry, um, ardent followers, um, seeking after uh, what it means to follow Jesus in this world um, was profoundly shaping. And so Matt and Rebecca, um, definitely part of that story for me. And so 
I want to talk about Jesus. Um, I also want to read scripture. Is it appropriate to stand? Or is, yeah, let's, let's stand as we, as we read the scripture together. From John chapter 3, verses 1 through 15. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, how can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh. What is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses. You hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, how can these things be? Jesus answered him, are you a teacher of Israel? And yet you do not understand these things. Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen Yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. Uh, You can be seated. So I want to talk about Jesus, uh, and when you're in the church, it might seem like a good thing, a straightforward thing, but when we stop and look at Jesus, things always seem to get more complex. When we look at Jesus, when we encounter Jesus, interacting even with the religious folk, things become more complex and yet somehow more beautiful. Jesus, his life, his ministry, the ways in which he lived, there's always more. There's always something of Jesus' life beckoning us to more. It's interesting to think about what Jesus might say to the church today. It's interesting to think if Jesus showed up, would we recognize him? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes on him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Our text of scripture today gives the context for this very well-known verse a verse with a lot of religious, cultural resonances. It's posted on billboards, signs at football games, pamphlets, flyers, shouted by street evangelists. Even if you've been to In-N-Out Burger in California, you will see John 3.16 as you bite into your juicy hamburger. And perhaps you are meant to understand the taste of the patty to be a foretaste of heavenly glory. Certainly, eternal salvation and the eternal, eternal salvation and, and, and this, uh, being rescued from the eternal fire is necessary to be saved from punishment, judgment. To be saved from, yes. But what in the world are we saved for? So I want to speak to the difference that Jesus makes in John 3. So first of all, he's speaking to religious people. Nicodemus, the Pharisees, represented the religious folk, the religious elite, who saw themselves uh, in a very real sense as guardians, guardians of tradition, guardians of Torah, of the law, of a certain political, religious way of life. They were set out, set up to protect, to purify the tradition. No Gentiles, no foreigners, no outsiders that could potentially corrupt. And Jesus comes along and says, it's not so much what you're doing, but what you're not able to see. You literally cannot see the kingdom of God. 
you can't see the life of God in the fullness of time. The promised one, here now, standing right in front of you. Said to the religious folks, you need new eyes. You must be born again. You must be ushered into a new way of thinking, renewed and remade. And just as Jesus engaged Nicodemus, I, I believe the Spirit of God wants to engage us and desires to expose those places in us, our values, the ways in which we cannot yet see the kingdom of God. So it comes with, with gentleness and kindness, but to expose, to expose our biases, the things we refuse to see, to reckon with. There's been a lot of news about the five wealthy travelers in the submarine implosion, but very little news about the 500 migrants who died at sea around the same time. Our country's history of enslavement, of racial injustice, exploitation around labor, I, I think puts us more in the category of Egypt than of the promised land flowing with milk and honey for all. But we see what we want to see. And we structure our lives around that which confirms our way of life. When the reality is there's so much we are unwilling to see. And we get busy with Netflix, consumed with YouTube shorts. Jesus says to Nicodemus, how are you not seeing this? You are a leader. Of course, there's John 3.16. But before John 3.16, there's John 3.14. And John 3. 15, to help Nicodemus. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. Very obscure reference to a somewhat troubling, mystifying passage in the book of Numbers, where God's people are in the wilderness having just destroyed the Canaanites, they grumbled against God, and as we all do, complained about the food. Grumbled against God, and God being God, sent poisonous snakes, biting many of the Israelites. And in their dying, Moses prays on behalf of the people for mercy. And the Lord instructs Moses then, again, so bewildering, to fashion a bronze serpent attach it to a pole, lift it up for the people to see that anyone who would look upon the serpent would live. And this is why I love Jesus. The mystery. Serpents, vipers, snakes from ancient times till now are terrifying, mysterious. In some cases, as in the case of Numbers, Dangerous for the people of God at that time in the wilderness. Serpents were associated with death. And as Moses lifts up the serpent in the wilderness, this serpent is also the one that holds the power of life, of resurrection power. Serpents, because of their nature, Shedding old skin, putting on the new, were also a symbol of wisdom, of rebirth, of healing. So in this, Jesus is calling Nicodemus to a new birth, even as a religious leader. And calling us to renewal and new birth. What does this new birth entail? I want to know Christ, the power of his resurrection. Amen, baby. That's my baby girl. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection.
Yes, we want to say amen to that. But the second part of the Philippians 3, I don't know if we want to say that. Yes to that. And the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings. Becoming like him in his death. Yes, we want to say yes to the triumph of the resurrection. But how many of us want to say yes? The fellowship of sharing in suffering. But if there is anything distinctive about us, it is that we are a particular people. And becoming a particular people through bearing in our bodies death. What always comes with death and loss, grief. And bearing in our bodies resurrection. And what comes with resurrection, hope and gratitude. This is the wisdom. This is the mystery. This is the power of Jesus as a new and, tra- and greater serpent being lifted up. And without a doubt, if I ever own a restaurant or coffee shop or a Christian t-shirt company, John 3.14 will be printed everywhere. So what is it that must be lifted up for you? The cross and Jesus is more than talisman or a mere symbol or an artifact, but a lived reality in our bodies and in our gathering as a body. As the Son of Man was lifted up, what must be lifted up for you? What must be lifted up for us? What is it that we must look at in order to be healed? So I want to get very practical here. In my work as a, I see myself as a pastoral counselor and seeing individuals and couples. Shame is a very complex reality. In the Chinese language, there are 113 shame-related words, meaning the culture I'm from, born into and figuring out the meaning of still, there's a lot of complexity in the internal experience of shame, but also how it functions in a family, how it functions in society. When I meet individuals and couples in pastoral meetings, whether or not they would actually use the word shame as they share about their lives, trying to hold things together, Shame is there. Like the serpent in the wilderness, it's complex and terrifying. And again, while they may not use the word shame, you see it, you feel it. In an eye roll, a grunt. And shame, like the serpent, is inviting us to engage, to look, to heal, to be reborn. Shame is a place of haunting, of memory. So where we come to name ourselves, to take in cursing, the place of loneliness, the place of exile, it's the place where we come to make vows never to be seen, never to be exposed, never to feel. Anger, rage rise up in us when we feel that shame will be exposed. Shame is so much the playground of evil. And yet, if we were to follow that trail of shame, both in our individual lives, but together as a community, with compassion, with kindness, to lift our eyes to it, in the same way that Moses lifted up the serpent in the desert as God's people looked on the serpent for their healing, I think there would be something of us that could be healed. Last week, Father's Day, knowing that my tendency is to avoid 
and to minimize myself. It was very much a grace to have room, to make room, to feel the weight of being a father. A father of two boys, ages 13 and 11, who I only see part-time in a co-parenting custody arrangement. To feel the grief of the loss of that time. And now, as a father of a beautiful daughter, there is resurrection life. So much gratitude. And I looked at pictures of my younger self being held by my father. And I allowed grief to come as I thought about the reality also of what unfolded in subsequent years in domestic violence and divorce. Growing up, allowing myself to feel the loss of love. And also, looking at pictures of my now old, old father holding our baby girl. And I wept. Yes, for the moments of death and loss. But I also wept with gratitude and hope for all that is and all that will be. And in that lifting up of memory, of image, of picture, and the remembering something of Christ's wisdom, mercy, tenderness seeped through tears. And it enabled me to see the kingdom of God. What needs to be lifted up in your life? What needs to be lifted up in this community? That God's power, mercy, might heal. Look to the cross. This Roman symbol of shame as a source of your healing. And in fixing your gaze upon Jesus, may there be infinite mercy and tenderness in what is exposed in your story and in your scars that they may become both glorious and beautiful. Let's pray. God, we thank you for being lifted up. Thank you for your infinite mercy, your infinite power that you would expose areas in us that we are unwilling to go, unwilling to see. And yet in your invitation, your gracious invitation, there is hope. There is so much hope. So we thank you. We thank you for your faithfulness today, yesterday, today, and forever. And we ask your spirit would bring us to new places of freedom, of hope. We pray this in this powerful son, powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Every week, we profess what we believe historically as a church uh, through the historic creed, the Apostles' Creed. Let us all now stand and say what we believe together. We believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. We believe in Jesus Christ, his Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven. As he is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated.
we now come to the communion table. The communion table is the Christian family meal where we're able to partake of the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. As Christ's body was lifted up for us and broken as he shed his broken body, we can shed our shame today as we come forward to share communion. So we are going to uh, lead in the great thanksgiving, but first I want to say if you're here today and you're exploring spiritual realities, you wouldn't consider yourself a Christian, we want you to know that this time is special for you today as well, but we'd ask that you don't come forward and partake of the physical elements of the bread and the wine, but rather consider what it would mean to take the spiritual elements of meeting Christ. We have prayers in the worship folder uh, that you can guide yourself through that time. So let us all now lead together as we play, uh, pray the great thanksgiving. We'll lead with the plain font, and we'll all respond together with the bold font. The Lord be with you. And also with you. joyful duty to give thanks to you at all times and in all places, O Lord, our Creator. Almighty and everlasting God, you created heaven with all of its hosts and earth with all of its plenty. You've given us life and being, and you preserve us by your providence. But you have shown us the fullness of your love in sending into the world your Son, Jesus Christ, the eternal Word made flesh for us and for our salvation. For the precious gift of this mighty Savior who has reconciled us to you, we praise and bless you, O God, with your whole church on earth and the whole company of heaven. We worship and adore your glorious name, saying, Righteous God, we remember in this supper the perfect sacrifice offered once on the cross by our Lord Jesus Christ for the sin of the whole world. In the joy of his resurrection and in expectation of his coming again, we offer ourselves to you as holy and living sacrifices. Together we proclaim the mystery of faith. Holy Spirit upon us, we pray, that the bread which we break and the cup which we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. Grant that being joined together in him, we may attain the unity of faith and grow up into all things Christ our Lord. And as this grain has been gathered from many fields into one loaf and these grapes from many hills into one cup, Grant, O oh Lord, that your whole church may soon be gathered from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. Even so, come, 
Lord Jesus. Praise to the Father. Praise to the Son. Praise to the Spirit. Our God, the Three in One. The Lord Jesus Christ. On the night he was betrayed, after giving thanks, he took bread and he broke it, saying, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. On the same night after supper, he took the cup. He said, This is the cup of the new covenant of my blood shed for you and for all so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. At this time, I'd like to invite Sean up, who's going to help me serve communion. There's no particular order that we take communion here. We ask that you just come down the center aisle. You can rip off a piece of bread, dip it into the larger cup, which is wine, or the smaller cup, which is juice. We also have gluten-free cups that are right here. Um, and we ask you to come down and then return back down the side aisles. The gifts of God for the people of God. Is the time in the service where we offer prayers. Um, I'll be leading us through a series of prayers and then I'll say, Lord, in our mercy, and then we'll all respond together. Hear our prayer. So, gracious Father, we pray for the New Liberty Church, Liberty Glassboro. We pray for Ted and for his leadership that this can really be a place in Glassboro, New Jersey that lives, speaks, and serves as your present 
presence. We pray for this church to be a church community that offers your healing presence, your compassion, your love, that people come to know the saving grace of the gospel at Liberty Glassboro, and also can also be a place that offers tangible love and mercy to those in need. Lord, in your mercy. In our prayer. Gracious Father, we also thank you for this past week, the Liberty Youth uh, gathered in Kensington and they went across the city and scattered into many different service sites offering your tangible present. We pray for the formation of our youth to have a heart for mercy and justice across the region. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father, we come to you today to offer our children up to you, Lord. As we know, summertime, schools are, uh, schools are out and children are with us a lot more. God, we pray for uh, Liberty Kids Ministry and for all the events that are gathering. That it can really be a connecting point, Lord. We pray for extra grace on mothers and fathers and children as they meet together in homes during the summer. God, we pray for your presence to be made known and for the Liberty Church uh, Kids Ministry and Family Ministries to be a support of your presence presence in people's lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear Let us now all pray as our Lord Jesus has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For your kingdom, you're the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. At this time we uh, is a time of offering. We understand that every good gift that we have comes from our Father in heaven. Here at Liberty Mainline, it's our year end, so we're asking if you could be generous to us so we could help meet our goals, so we continue to live, speak, and serve as Christ's presence right here on the main line. So it's really simple to give. We have an offering box in the back, but as well, there's a QR code right in the worship folder, or you can go to libertychurchmainline.org and also give that way. So now join us in singing. I want comfort both in life and death is that I am not my own. I was bought with blood and I confess I belong to you alone. By the Father's good decree, Jesus, you to thank everyone for joining us. Um, please look in the back of the worship folder for all the ways to connect during the summer. Now hear the words of benediction. May the grace of God lift you up. May the love of God hold you close. May the blessing of God be yours forever. 
Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.